Hey everyone, this is Kamran and welcome to the fourth video of the illustrated data structure series. Today we'll be talking about the stack data structure. A stack is a linear collection of items where items are inserted and removed in a specific order. Let's take an example of a stack in the real world. There might be a stack of plates or a stack of books where each new book is placed on top of the last book in the stack. And when we remove an item from the stack, the last item or the last book is the one that we remove first. Similar to the real world stacks, we have the stack data structure, where items of the stack are placed on top of each other. There could be a stack of strings, a stack of numbers, objects, booleans, or any other data type. All right, so let's look at how the insertion and removals work on the stacks. So first of all, we have the insertion of items. Whenever we add a new item to the stack, each new item is added on top of the previously added item in the stack. And for the retrieval, it follows the LIFO principle, which stands for last in and first out, which means that whenever we read an item from the stack, it will read the item that was most recently added to the stack. So in this case, we'll first get the baby dough, then we will get the Jenny dough, then we'll get the Jane dough, and lastly, we'll get the John dough. All right, so now that we know what the stack data structure is and how the data is inserted and removed from the stack, let's look at the operations you can perform on a stack. All right, so first of all, we have to create the stack. So we create an object from the stack class and this will give us an empty stack. Now for the operations, we can check if the stack is empty or not. And for that, we use the isEmpty method, which will return a Boolean value. In this case, it will be true because our stack is empty. Next, we can add items to the stack. And for that, we use the push method. So here we are adding five and then 12 and then 30 into the stack. And as you can see, the item that we add at the last is the one that we have on top of the stack. All right, so next we have the peak method. And the peak method is the one that gives us the top most value of the stack without removing it from the stack. And if you look at the current stack, we have 30 as on the top of the stack. So the peak will return 30. Next, we have the pop method, which returns the value that we have on top of the stack. And also it removes the value from the stack. So here we have 30 on top of the stack. So the pop will return 30. And also it is going to remove the 30 value from the stack. And now if we call it again, next we have 12 on top of the stack. So it will return 12. And also it will remove 12 from the stack. And finally, we have the size method which gives us the current size of the stack. So currently we have only one item in the stack. So size will return one. All right, so now that we know what the stack is and what are the different operations you can perform on a stack, let's look at the sample implementation of a stack class in JavaScript. So here we have a stack class. Inside that we have a empty array of items, which is going to hold the items of our stack. This can also be implemented with the linked list, but for now let's focus on the arrays. The first method that we have here is called push, which is accepting an item. And it is simply adding that item to the items array. Then we have the pop method, which is just returning the last item of the array. Then we have the size method, which just returns the items count. And finally, we have the peak method, which just gets the last item of the array. And then we have just sample code to test the implementation of the stack. All right, so now about the use cases of the stack. Most of the applications use the stack to perform the undo or the redo operations. So what they do is they keep track of the user's operations in some sort of a stack. And when the undo or the redo command is performed, the application looks at the stack to identify the operation that it has to undo or redo. Another use case would be any algorithm where you may have to track the steps that you perform. So for example, if you are writing a program to solve a maze, you may need to keep track of the steps that you took so that if you hit a blocker in the maze, you can go back by following the steps that led to the blocker. All right, so that's all for this one. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will see you in the next video on the Q data structure.